Hello and welcome to the November edition of this month's experiment from the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center in San Diego, California. I'm Nicole Schiffer. And I'm Brandon Elliott. So today we're going to be doing a demonstration and an experiment about the difference between land and sea ice. We've got a pretty big mock-up here that we're going to be doing a demonstration with first, and then we're going to be doing an experiment that you can try at home, just like all of the rest of these videos. Just Super. like all the rest of the videos, you can find the materials you need on our website, www.rhfleet.org. .org. Thank you. Uh, but I'll just tell you briefly, you're not going to need a whole lot of materials for this one this month. Um, we need a couple of plastic cups, just like this, clear plastic cups so you can see what's going on. Um, you're going to need some ice. This is ice. There it is. And uh, the other thing you're going to need is a little tiny screen or like cheesecloth, something like that that'll be, that you'll put right on top of the cup as such. All right. Later on. And Definitely. some water. And some water. There's the water. All right. Cool. cool. Let's get started on our larger scale experiment here. Um, so we've set up two large aquariums with water already in it. Uh, the water level should be relatively the same. And we have some large pieces of ice. Yes. So we have right here our iceberg or our sea ice and our glacier here, our land ice. So what we're going to do is put those into separate waters. So if you want to take on the sea ice, go ahead and put that one in the... The iceberg. Iceberg. All right. Cool, and I'm going to take the glacier, the land ice, and put it on here on the tray. We've actually mocked up a tray so that it, st it stands um, on this clear plastic tray and drips into the water. So there's kind of like a U-shaped Just like now. a glacier would up in one of the polar regions. Precisely. So at this point, we are going to draw the line. Okay. This line is basically going to represent the water level. The whole point of doing all of this the is, water to see, level, the sea level. is to see how the water level in our tanks or the sea level out in the ocean would change based on the melting of this ice in different Yeah, parts. and it'd be good if you guys actually make a prediction at this point. Do you think it'll affect the water level or the sea level? Yes or no? Will there be difference be differences between them? And what do you guys go. think? The world's straightest line right there. All right, let me try it. Absolutely. Oh, all right. I think that is good enough. And so now what do we do? We have to wait <laughs> a really long time. It's beautiful, really. All right, so while we're waiting, let's try the smaller scale experiment. So we have two cups. Brandon, if you don't mind holding them. So the one to our left will be... Sea ice. Sea ice. The one to the right will be... Land ice. Land ice. All right, so I'm going to pour... About the same amount of, oh gosh, sorry about that. No, I did okay. not mean to do that at all. Oh wait, will you put those two together? That's about right. That's about the same. Have to be and I'm going to try to put in the same amount of ice in each. I'm actually going to only put one in the water for the sea ice, so I'm going to grab, Iceberg. okay, a small, a smallish handful, smallish, and put it in our sea ice. All right, and for our land ice, just like the big mock-up, we have our mesh screen to put over the glass so it doesn't actually go in the water. And I'm going to get a small handful and put it on top. And what do we do now, Brandon? Do we draw a line? We draw a line. All right. Where's that marker? Right there. All right. <laughs> Here's your marker. We draw a line right here. Indicating the sea level level of the ice before it's melted. And we're going to compare this a, a little while. Yeah, draw the line again. All right. Cool. And, and now we wait. <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. I only have one ice hey, kind of partially yeah. left here. Okay. How about you? Well, Where's your... Well, mine's completely melted, but okay. the water level is exactly the same. The water. Let me see. This yeah. isn't level, though. How can we? Let's put it up on right. the surface here because I want to make this. Oh, very nice. Okay, so I see that yours is still at the same point. Yep. But what about mine? I'm gonna remove this screen actually because yeah. I can't quite see it. Oh my goodness! So I'm gonna go ahead and mark where the water's at. All right. So the water level has definitely changed on the land ice or the glacier one, as you can see. And about a quarter of an inch, actually. Yeah. And on the sea ice one, or the iceberg, iceberg. there is no change. No change at all. Huh. And the same thing holds true for our lar larger model. Our glacier or land ice one, actually, the water level has increased ever so slightly. 
So the red line indicates after it's been melting, the purple line indicates the beginning, and if we go over here, I've already marked the same thing, mm -hmm. in red, um, the water level is still the same. Yep. So, okay, so we had sea ice that the water level did not change from melting. We have land ice, the water increased. What's going on here? Right. Well, it has to do with this big concept called displacement, okay? Displacement. Yeah, so this, ice, this iceberg here was actually displacing an amount of water. It has to do with something called Archimedes' principle. Okay. And he basically found out that when you've got an object that's displacing some water, that amount of water that's being displaced is equal to the volume of that object, so that iceberg, whatever. You're, okay. not gonna, you're not gonna raise the level any, okay? That's basically what he found out. But when you've got a block of ice outside, it's melting into the water, okay? okay. You're, you, and that's gonna actually raise the sea level. So no displacement involved, it's literally just exactly. melting into. Exactly, because it's not floating in there like this one was. Cool, does that hold true to the predictions you guys made before? I don't know, I don't know. it's that's kind of cool. interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. This is really important because, again, we've been talking a lot about global warming lately. Absolutely. And sea levels rising, all that kind of stuff. Um, seasonally, you're going to get icebergs melting, refreezing, thawing, the whole thing mm -hmm. from summer to, sp to spring to winter, all of that. But when we increase the global temperature, what happens is there may be a shift in what's melting up there in the polar regions. So what's melting up there right now is a lot of this glacier land ice is happening, and a lot of that is actually Absolutely. starting to melt down. So that's actually going to increase I the sea level. I saw the Mendenhall Glacier in Alaska. Did you really? Melt a little bit. And it was melting right in front of yeah. you. Yeah. See, the thing is that, that wasn't like there's happening. There's like runoff from the glacier yeah. into this, this um, into the, lake. Into the, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that never used to happen, that, or is, from what we can tell, that didn't happen, at least at the rate that it's happening now. So we've actually found out that if the West Atlantic ice sheet melted, um, that would actually increase the, the sea level by about five meters. And that's huge because if the sea level actually rose by one meter, that would displace 100,000 people living along the coast, including us here in San Diego. That would be all water right out there. So it's a Whoa. yeah, so it's a big deal. So we need to come up with some steps that we can again start getting yeah, rid of some of this, this global warming. So what are some of the last things? Last episode be? in this episode we've been talking about climate change. I want to know what can we do? Right. What can we do as global citizens to help Right. To help stop the process Absolutely. or slow it down. Yeah. So, so one of the things we've some ideas. Yeah, one of the things we've talked about is the fact that there's a lot of carbon going up into the atmosphere that's getting trapped and it's creating greenhouse gases. And that's what's increasing the temperature. Uh, in the atmosphere. So, so what's we can do things like reduce our carbon footprint by, by public transportation, public right? Public transportation, absolutely. Recycling, so less things have to be in, uh, manufactured, less fossil fuels are being burned, all that kind of stuff that you absolutely. hear about. That's what's all, that's Thank the you. whole reason. That's something so. that's very vital. Great, this was an awesome experiment. Thank you viewers at home for watching. And remember, do, do try, try this at home. home.